Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you why steady handedness can lead to a flawless headlight restoration just like this. Flawless perfect. victory. Picture perfect, better than the day I rolled off the lot. Performs better, looks better. And I'm going to be showing you step by step what I did to get it in this condition. And guess what? You can follow my steps and do the exact same thing. Stay tuned. The Headlight Restoration Pro. The future of Headlight Restoration. Part listen. Part man, part machine. Underneath it's a hyper alloy combat chassis. Microprocessor control. Fully armored. Very tough. But outside it's living human tissue. Let's get down to business. Okay, this vehicle has a lot of sun etching into its natural clear coat that came from the factory. Um, sun etching is pretty much uh, like it sounds like. It starts digging little pits and caverns in there and at the same time melting uh, clear coat slowly over time into the plastic where it's uh, real rigid. Um, it feels kind of like a broken surface, like a concrete or something. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's no big deal. You just kind of have to have a steady hand and kind of finesse it. Um, cause you're going to have to dig a lot of this out. Okay. You're going to have to go a little bit deeper than you normally would go to get that utmost clarity. And the best technique you can use on this, uh, is pressure control and steady handedness. Okay. While we're speaking about steady handedness, um, Basically, that's one of the things that I attribute my headlight restorations to why, um, you know, the pressure and the steady handedness, uh, the steady handedness uh, just makes it easy to where you don't get all these scratches everywhere. Uh, pressure, of course, is one of the number one things for um the uh, striations and the scratches that are left over that are hard to get out. Only time you have something left over is if you're not checking your work efficiently enough. I've been guilty of it dozens of times. It happens a couple times a month and I just go back over it. Um, but the thing is, I catch it before I seal it. Okay. Uh, you really want to inspect those lights before you seal it. And, um, Check this out. I had a question today about uh, the, you know, the trigger control or whatever. You can feather and control that trigger to get different speeds. The max, it, you know, is seventeen hundred. Okay, on this particular one, this is the full size um, drill. This isn't the. Um, this isn't the brushless. This isn't the one I've been using. This is my older drill, whatever. Um, this one uh, is about 1750 RPM, okay, but that's zero to 1750, which means you can go 100 RPM, which means you can go 1000 RPM, you can go 1300 RPM. It goes everything from zero to 1750. So you can slow down, you can speed up, you can do whatever you want. It's all about trigger control. But like I was saying, the um, sanding pressure is what you're going to be uh, wanting to control to not dig, to not really gouge out those surfaces, okay? With um, control of your hands, your steadiness, your hand steadiness or whatever, um, you see, I want you to focus. On this video, I want you to focus on how I'm moving my hands and I'm moving the drill, okay? Uh, that black stuff right there, sidebar, that black stuff right there is fine. It's just hitting uh, this top bar. Some of these vehicles have a glued in piece right there that you cannot remove um, that goes flush with the light. Okay, so you just try not to hit it that much. And if you do, it's not a big deal. It's taking like a, a, a micro fraction out of it. You know, it's really no big deal. And then you're sealing over it. So it just doesn't really even fucking matter at all. But it just, you don't want to get too much of it on your light because then you start having weird things and the weird little tints and stuff like that can happen. So just want to keep a clean environment. But anyways, like I said, uh, gouging out heavy, deep scratches that are hard to get out is a tribute to too much pressure. Okay, when you get a lot of swirling, 
okay? A lot of swirling striations around there that has nothing to really do with uh, the gouging. Uh, they're more flared out or whatever. That is because you're not using a steady hand, okay? You're not controlling your drill. You're letting it, uh, you know, jiggle around and shit, okay? You're letting it move and jump and pop and do all these weird things, okay? Uh, and your, your steady handedness is not smooth like a machine, like not focusing on just, you know, skimming across the top of that, uh, headlight. You're, um, you're not focused enough. You really gotta focus. Now, like I said, pay attention to my hands and my motion and everything that I'm doing. I'm gonna have a part coming up here that I, uh, phase out a little, uh, bit of it and I focus it back about an inch or two so you can really pay attention to my hand movement on certain steps and certain other things about these certain steps coming up steady handedness though like a machine moves okay I really move like a machine moves I'm um, I'm using all my muscles and everything and all my concentration which doesn't take much but it takes all of them in unison to really just hold this thing still and to just you know not just this but every step that you're using anything that's touching the headlight you want to focus on your smooth motion, your gliding, your you're barely skimming the surface. And it takes a lot of concentration to keep, you know, everything steady like that. But watch my focus. You see, if I start having issues with it moving, whatever, I change the position of my hand. Don't be a slave to uh, holding your drill up and down, holding your drill with this hand over that hand, or, you know, this way or that way. You see, if you're really paying attention to any of my headlight restorations, sometimes I turn the drill upside down, I turn it this way, I turn it that way, I turn it 45 degree angle, you know, I do all kind of shit with the drill. I change my hand here, I put my hand on top of it, I put my hand on the bottom of it, I do whatever it takes, whatever I feel um, is comfortable or whatever I feel is giving me desired effect of steadiness. I've never uh, really uh, emphasized on the importance of a steady hand when doing headlight restoration, when doing powered headlight restoration. When you're doing it by hand, um, it's, it's a certain aspect of being steady as well. You should still apply uh, this science to it. Um, or this ideology to it, but when it comes to a machine, it is much more important, okay? Because a machine uh, is gonna be 10,000 times more powerful than your hand sanding can ever be. So it's really important that you have a steady hand. With this vehicle, uh, this is the first headlight restoration it's ever receiving. And uh, believe it or not, this guy came out and was just looking at it and looking at it. And he jumped up and down like, I can't believe this shit. Exactly. Wow. Uh, how is this possible? Like, it doesn't even look. I've had this car since the beginning when I bought it. And I get this so many. I get this probably probably five dozen times a year I got this car you know from the beginning from the lot first owner and it has never looked like this these headlights have never looked like this better than the day it rolled off the lot right and that's one of my slogans I say because I mean it's true when you're doing this method they're gonna come out better than the factory can produce them if done correctly okay it's gonna come out more clear it's gonna come out better looking it's gonna have that wet look it's gonna have that ultra see-through glass mirror look okay and it's gonna perform better they're gonna be performing like off lot it's you know my estimate at a hundred percent okay because that's the control off the lot headlights when you're doing this method and you're removing and you're reworking it and you're doing certain elements uh, of this headlight restoration method you're going to be getting a hundred and ten percent on my estimate of efficiency which means it's going to be working a smidgen over the factory spec it's going to be performing better um check this out here i had this customer recently i did his uh minivan and it was a long day uh didn't do any recording that day i had you know a couple um vehicles i did and his was done about six o'clock just about when the sun was going down so um definitely wasn't recording it but as you see there he sent me the next day this message here and he couldn't believe um you know he said the same thing better than a day rolled off the lot better than the better than the, they don't say rolled but they said better than the day you know metaphorically they say that better than the day i got it you know off the car lot you know whatever but it was an odyssey van and this is the efficiency that you get okay 
Um, I've done these tests before uh, with 2K Clear and uh, other things like this, but it's hard to do this because I'm not going to refurbish my headlights every you know test. I'm not gonna do, you know do these tests and you know do it on my headlights or test on somebody else's car and then have to redo their headlights right away to make them proper because one of them, of course, 2K Clear is not gonna perform correctly. So you can't just leave somebody like that. I'm not gonna leave my own car like that. And I'm not gonna do excessive amounts of headlight restoration. They're gonna say, but I have done it before and the test is ridiculous. When I did the side by side test, one side was extremely dull with the 2K and uh, the other side with a headlight certified uh, substance. Okay. Um, but he said, uh, you know, he just couldn't believe how much they worked and he had a long trip. Um, I believe it was a power lifter or whatever. Uh, he had a, a, uh, competition, you know, the next morning, like 400 miles away and he was driving and he wanted, uh, his, uh, van's lights to be correct. And uh, he texted me the next morning. Of course, he was leaving early because the sun wasn't up yet. And he was just shocked when he turned the lights on coming out of the garage. And he sent me a picture of it. And this is not something I asked him to do. This is just something that good work, um, you know, when you do good work, stuff like this happens and people get excited. Now, I'm defocusing here a little bit. And I want you to focus on my hands, okay? Focus on my hands. And also, check this out. I'm doing a wet sanding step. Okay, this is an extra wet sanding step that you can include when you want some extra clarity or some extra smoothness. It's not going to work on every light, okay? Or it's going to be unnecessary on some lights, okay? Shall I say. Um, but nevertheless, listen. Most restorers go too fast when wet sanding. Most restorers use way 10,000 times too much water. The more water you use is the more lubricant you use, is the more friction you reduce. Friction is how sandpaper works. So the more water you use, the less the sandpaper is working. takes way less water than what you think. And if I'm wrong, why is my finished product better than theirs? I'm just saying. You would trip out if you saw me do a full wet sand on a light. You wouldn't believe it. But nevertheless, could you hear the sound of it? You can hear it. Uh, usually when wet sanders are wet sanding, you don't hear it too much like that. You don't, you know, they're going real fast. You don't really hear it because it's so much water. It's so much going on that it's not even utilizing the power of the sandpaper, okay? It's just, uh, you know, they're drowning the light. There's puddles dripping down underneath the car, all this stuff like that. Uh, to properly sand and get the real effect of the sand. See how smooth? Look at, I'm leaving it unfocused, but for a minute. See how smooth and flat it looks, okay? That is nice. That is smooth. But here's the thing. Most restorers will spray it at this point. Right, most of the shit you see on the internet, all the bullshit you see, right? I emphasize on bullshit because <laughs> they're they're not educated uh, with it. They're using stuff that's not meant for headlights, and they're trying to use the porousness of this headlight for the material, the two K, uh, the the acrylic, the whatever it is, to bite on the headlight because it's not designed to adhere to polycarbonate and or plastic. Okay, plastic is an oily substance. Things have a hard time gripping it. Okay, so that is one of the primary reasons why it's best to use something that is designed for headlights. It's much different, you know, even though it's a similar, it's in the same book, but it is a different word. Okay, uh, so people aren't educated, you know, and they're not understanding, you know, the difference. And, you know, they're selling these products that look real good. They can look real good. My 2K clear lights looked exemplar. It just, they just looked the shit. Nothing like this. Okay. Cause this is going to always be superior with this method. They're always going to outshine and outlook no matter what. I don't give a shit. It's um, just because of the method and because 
because of uh, the fact they're using headlight certified clear code. All right, it's a different ball game. Um, but they looked so good. They looked amazing. There was a sellable. I never really had a complaint besides that. Okay. Um, so, uh, but anyhow, it's, it's not the same. Okay. It's not the same. And when you're, you know, coating them when they're foggy, it's just common sense. Coat them foggy or coat them like this. You don't want to overthink of it. I did all the research. I did all the shit like that. And I'm trying to break it down into layman's terms because, you know, I'm not, you know, trying to get too scientific with too scientific explanations or whatever. I'm trying to keep it, you know, easy to take in for anybody. Okay. For all levels of people, whether you're just doing it yourself or you want to be a professional. Um, but like this disc right here is a magic disc as well. This disc uh, contributes to this as well. But look at this. This looks better than most people's finished product. I've been saying that a lot because, um, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me that through uh, DMs or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. This looks better than most finished people's products. My 2K clear lights that I did myself, uh, you know, looks similar to this right here. Okay. But this has no coating or nothing on it. This is how the fact factory coats their shit okay because that other stuff will scatter your light you won't even know because it's not designed for this this product i'm going to put on here is going to make this shit look so um amazing so clear so wet because it was sprayed on a proper surface a clear surface and because it is a proper substance that is meant to be transparent Okay, not just transparent, but photo transparent or light transparent. Okay, so it's meant to have light pass through it. When you're putting some shit on your headlight, you know, clear isn't clear. Okay, clear, just because it's clear does not mean light is meant to pass through it. Okay, it refractors. Okay, and it would that just means that uh, that one beam of light that's coming through or that one wave of light that comes through hits this stuff and it refractors in different ex different areas, different ways, different directions. Okay, so it makes your lights diminished. Okay, you can literally lose literally if it depending on how it's done, you can lose 100 yards of light. Okay? You can use 50 yards of light depending on what vehicle and how it's done. And it's that serious and that's a long way. That's a football field, ladies and gentlemen, or a half a football field of light at nighttime. And especially when you're going 60, 70 miles an hour, I'm telling you, that can be a life or death situation. Um, but anyways, look at that. If you can see in that good, if you can see in that good, the it's a good indicator that you can see out that good. By far. But not always, okay? Because some people are putting some bullshit on headlights and you know it. It's just common sense. Common sense. And the thing is, um, there's just so much into it. I can't even, if I, if I made 10 videos about this, I wouldn't be able to even scratch the iceberg of why you should just use stuff that's designed for headlights. Okay. You don't want to use some shit that's designed for somebody to, uh, you know, spray on paint to make it clear or candy looking. You don't want to use some shit that's sprayed on bricks to make them shiny. Okay. Just because it's clear. You want to use the shit that's made for headlights and headlights only by scientists okay so uh that's one of the reasons why i go through name brand stuff like 3m mcguire's or this and that because you never know what <laughs> joe schmo put in a can for you to put on your headlights okay time to wrap this one up just make sure that you have a steady hand when doing headlight restoration it makes a big difference where you're not getting those swirls in the final stages that you have to remove that's a pain in the ass and a lot of people just don't catch uh, and make sure you know the difference between transparent and translucent. Transparent of a material or article, allowing light to pass through so objects behind can be distinctly seen. Translucent of a substance, allowing light but not detailed shapes to pass through semi-transparent. The Headlight Restoration Pro. The future of headlight restoration. Part, listen. part man, part machine. Underneath it's a hyper alloy combat chassis. Microprocessor control. Fully armored. Very tough. But outside it's living human tissue. 